This conference will now be recorded. Okay. So Parshat Akev, uh, page 980. And uh, this Parsha contains a lot of our um, really fundamental yesodot, fundamental foundational principles um, in Judaism. And it also includes the second Parsha of the Shema. The first Parsha was in last week's we didn't learn last week i was still traveling right okay so i think we'll and then we'll double back to the first parsha of shema for some um for some some thoughts on that but let us begin page 980 vaya and it will be akev tishmaun et hamishpatim ha'ela and it will be Akev blank. We'll see what that means. Tishma'un, you will listen to the Mishpatim Ha'ela to these judgments, Ushmartem, and you will guard them, Vasitem Otam, you will do them, Vishamar Hashimalakacha, and God will safeguard for you Etabrit, Veta Chesed, Asher Nishba La Avotecha. The, the covenant and the kindness that he swore to your forefathers. He will love you. He will bless you. And he will multiply you, increase you. And he will bless all of your, all of your assets on the land that Hashem swore to give to you. Baruch Tiyet. Mikol Amin, blessed you will be amongst all the nations. Right, a whole beautiful, beautiful list of what will happen. Akev Tishmaun. So, what is this Akev? So, if you look on the in the Chumash, we have the Unklus on the left hand side over there. The Unklus is the Aramaic translation of the Torah. And what used to be done and is still done in many Yemenite communities today is that when the person would read the Torah Shabbat morning, he would read a pasuk, pause, Aramaic translation, Targum, pasuk, translation, pasuk, translation. And in some Yemenite communities in Israel, at least I know today, that's still how they do that. And still, it doesn't take as long as as it takes us. Just go figure, right? Just different uh, <laughs> different approaches. They read very fast. They do, they do. When Yosef Levy reads, you yeah. can't understand. Anything. And and they get off to an early start. Also, they're you know they're they're not wasting any time. I remember when we when I was living in Israel, we vacationed in the Golan. I went to a shul there and I asked the person, uh, what, "What time is tefillah in the morning?" He said, "You want the early or the late?" I said, I'm on vacation. I want the late. He said, six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are a bunch of other Americans there. We, we got an 8.30 minion together. <laughs> that was more our, our vacation mode. So the uncle says, V'yihi chalaf, in exchange, de tikablun. Right? In exchange that you will accept all of these things, then all of these brachot will follow. Rashi takes a more um, drash approach. And Akev, which part of the body is the Akev? The heel. The heel is an Akev. So Rashi learns, those easy mitzvot that a person dash the akaba avav, that a person steps on with his heel, right? Dash is like to trample upon, right? Right? Those easy mitzvot that a person will trample upon, if those will be careful with, then all of these brachot will follow. So what might Rashi be referring to? 
what are these easy mitzvot that a person tramples upon or disregards? What might you say? That's not an easy one, right? right. Ju- Judy mentioned Lashon Hara is, is not such an easy one, right? Yeah, Aaron? I mean, blessings of water, those little things that we are just very trivial. Okay, okay, so Aaron wants to say the things that are that uh, trivial, right? You know, making a bracha that either we don't make the, the blessing, we don't show our appreciation, we'll see. Our Pasha also contains the one Torah, the one clearly Torah mandated blessing. And that is v'achalta, v'savata, uve'rachta. You will eat, you become satisfied, and you will bless Hashem on the great land that he has given us. We'll come to that soon. So Aaron wants to say, wants to propose the light brachot, are, uh, the, the light mitzvot are, let's say, brachot, right? That, that we'll, we'll say it. We, we don't say it, we will say it, but we'll, we'll, we'll mumble it out there as opposed to uh, to feeling it and really saying it. Nice. Any other ideas? Or I can't think of an example. The unrecognized ones, people tend to do things that others notice and will give them recognition. Okay. The ones that are swept away. Okay. The you know giving the, something to the homeless that no one cares about the, the, the no quiet the about. quiet mitzvot right you know people often we tend to like a lot of fanfare and we want to have a uh, have a uh, our name up in lights right Not but even that much but we all want to be acknowledged we want to be acknowledged <laughs> yeah yeah and and so, uh, uh, you know it, it's it's important to sometimes to do a mitzvah that no one else needs to know about. Sort of like, ah, oh, this is just between uh, between me and you, right? You know, you, you mentioned Lashon Hara. Right? Sometimes a person, in the course of a conversation or a group, you have something, something, you have a really, a pretty funny thing to say, right? But it's going to, uh, it'll be at someone else's expense, right? So you hold yourself back and you say, Hashem, oh, you know, between you and me. <laughs> We'll keep we'll we'll keep that between you and me, right? Nice, nice. There are some that say that the mitzvot that we are dashba akavav are the mitzvot Well, before we get there, right? There are lots of simple mitzvot. That we that, that we disregard, right? You know, like you know, to not put on my tefillin in the morning. It's a it's a Torah mitzvah. Of course, I'm gonna put on my tefillin, right? But chesed, or not taking nikama, not taking revenge, is also a a Torah mitzvah, right? So how about when we're driving, right? How many opportunities come our way to let someone someone's trying to get into lane? Right. So instead of speeding up to close the gap that the poor guy or gal is trying to, how about like slowing down and and, and 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 waving them in? Right. That's a Torah level mitzvah of chesed that you're doing. Right. But for some reason, we get behind the wheel. Often there's a certain aggressiveness that um, that that takes over. Or that person didn't let me into the lane. Oh, now they want to get into my lane. Oh, we'll see if they'll get into. Now that is a perfect Torah level prohibition of taking revenge, right? Or saying, oh, he didn't let me in. I'll let him in. Oh, once again, a Torah level of loti kom loti tor. Do not take revenge. Do not harbor the animosity, right? So we have all of these all of these interactions that make such a difference, right? You mentioned brachot, right? A bracha, I had a conversation with a young man earlier this week who was struggling with, with brachot, right? Blessed are you, God. Blessed are you, God. Blessed are you, God. Come on. How much blessed are you, God? God, you're, 
I said, don't look at a bracha as blessed are you, God. Look at a bracha as thank you, Hashem. I'm about to have a drink of water. I'm about to have a piece of cake. Thank you. I, I, I said to him, I said, when you go into your house tonight, I said, how long have you lived in this house his entire life? When you go into your house tonight, set a timer on your, on your phone for five minutes. Keep your eyes closed for five minutes. You know your house well. You live there your whole life. See how well you navigate around your house if you can't see. And then tomorrow morning, make the blessing. Blessed are you, Hashem. Hokeach Ivrim. You open up the eyes of the blind. You've given me sight. Right? So a bracha is not, oh God, you're great. A bracha is simply, thank you. So how about not just to Hashem, but also to one another, right? Do we take for granted, uh, very often, those who are closest to us are the ones that we take for granted. Uh, I've quoted many times a close friend of mine, still a close friend to this day, when he, his parents had a very nice relationship and he asked them, what was the key to your relationship? And they said, we always say thank you. We always say please and thank you to one another. Right? That's, those are the mitzvot that we are, that we, that we trample upon. Right? A simple hello, a simple smile, a simple kind word, a, a please, a thank you. Right? Especially with those that we're, who are, we're always doing for them and they're always doing for us. But, uh, but not to take that for granted. And if we be careful not to trample on those, which means, right, so why will that bring this bracha? Because then we're living a life where we are present. Right? We live in a world where we're never present. I'm taking a picture. Uh, you see a wedding, a, a father under the chuppah with his phone, taking pictures. Really? Let someone else take the darn pictures. Enjoy it. Live it. Be there. Experience it. And, and when we are open towards that, when, when we're appreciating this person did that, that person did this, it means that we, we're open, we're alive, we're, 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 we're there in the moment. We're living life. When we have that, then these brachas follow. Judy. A lot of the commandments. I just want them to hear. A lot of the commandments um, really are for other Jews. Meaning what? That there's specifically when you're supposed to treat somebody a certain way or do something, it refers to other Jews. Okay. Okay. Anybody. So does and that? That is true, right? Does that refer to only Jews? I don't know if that's the case. The Gemara, the Gemara extols the virtue of Rabbi Yochanan. I think it's Rabbi Yochanan that no one ever preceded him in the good morning wishes, right? And that's not, you know, it's not that he, that it was not to every Jew, right? To every person, we're supposed to, right? we're supposed to, uh, we help uh, non-Jewish poor also along, along with our Jewish brothers and sisters. So certainly, I, I don't think the kindness is meant to extend only, only to us. Now, th there, there are certain halachot which said that, and this was in, a, in an idolatrous society where these practices were not followed. So you don't have to be better to them than they are to one another and, and more than they expect one to another. Okay, so we don't need to, right, in a society where now in our society, people, right, return lost objects. But when it, when it truly was instituted, finders, keepers, losers, weepers, right, that's it, right? So then we didn't have the obligation to go to all lengths to return a lost object to a non-Jew if in that society the norm was, no, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. 
but in our world, where in our society at least, so then you know, I, I, it, it it does extend beyond, and certainly it. Right, the Gemara tells a story of of I think of Shim and Shed, I forget who it was, who purchased a donkey, right, from a certain uh, certain Gentile purchased a donkey, and his students brought the donkey to him, and then they noticed that there was this this pouch around the neck of this donkey and they opened it up and they saw in this pouch was a a, a precious a precious gem a, a stone of value and the students said look rebbe look look what a gift hashem has sent you and he said uh, actually please bring this back to the person who sold the donkey to me i bought a donkey i did not buy a, a leather pouch with a with a gem inside and when the students returned it this person said baruch eloka de i think it was shimon ben shetach blessed is the god of shimon ben shetach meaning it was clear that it was because he was a religious jew that is why he he acted in that manner and and recently recently within a, few, a number of years ago there was a beautiful story that, that that went around that there was a a young a young religious guy in New York, New Jersey, wherever it was, who on Craigslist bought a desk, right? I mean, many of us have bought some items on Craigslist. So he went to this woman's house, right, and was able to get it out of her house and you know pay for it, of course. And he came to his house in order to get it into the room where it needed to fit. He needed to take apart the desk. The, the, it, it was too wide to fit through the doorway there. So he took apart the desk. As he's taking apart the desk, there is a thick envelope that had fallen behind one of the drawers that had about $20,000 worth of cash in there. Right? A significant amount of money, right, for, I think for almost anyone, right? And certainly for this young religious couple, this was a very significant and without hesitation, right? Obviously, now he could have held on to it. The woman obviously did, did not know that it was there. And no one had ever known. And he went back and, 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 um, and returned it to her. Right, this was money that she had been saving up for her retirement. What it was, she thought it was somewhere else. She must have put it into there, and as things happened, it fell behind the drawer, and she never even knew to look for it over there. Right, and this became a, a news item on some of the talk shows and this and that. And Eloka, Baruch Eloka, blessed is the God of this of this young of this young religious Jewish couple that they had this this integrity so certainly when it comes to the to 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 the to the kiddush hashem aspect to you know we, i mentioned before we say the shema the ahafta is hashem elokecha you should love hashem your god so another explanation there is the ahafta make god be beloved act in a way that will cause hashem to be ahuv al habriyot that people will love God. They'll say, oh, here's a religious person, and this is how this person acts. Wow. Wow, that is something that I want to ascribe to, that I want my my kids to be part of. Unfortunately, right, what often makes the news is the opposite. It's when a, when a religious person right, does something that is not in accordance with a what a religious person should be doing right so it's so important to um yeah so i would say judy that it does extend well beyond the acts of kindness and and, and being and being polite and being gracious right it certainly it, it extends not just to our brothers jewish brothers and sisters it extends beyond Another idea that's brought up in this Ekev Tishma'un, we'll give two more, then we'll go forward, right, is that even when we are doing mundane activities, 
they also can become infused with Kedusha, with holiness. If we do it, you know, I can go to work to, you know, to, earn, to earn my pay. Or I can do it in order because I, I need to support my family in order that we can buy things for Shabbos and, buy, and, and support my family. Right? You know, I, I can eat because I'm hungry. I can eat to give me the strength in order to, uh, in order to be able to do good things, to do mitzvot, to do all these things. Right? So a person can, can work on, on trying to, you know, the, it's interesting, the, the Ramchal, or Moshe Chaim Lutzato. See, he speaks about how we are a physical body, right? How a person is a combination of a physical and a spiritual, and our job is to choose the spirituality and not be pulled after the materialism, after the physicality, after our physical urges, but to but to become a spiritualized person. We always say that a mitzvah is a way for a physical person and a physical world to touch that which is beyond the physical, to touch the eternal, to touch, to touch the spiritual. So th- that is the, the battleground of our life where we find ourselves. But he says, well, look at it. Uh, the, the, the deck is stacked against us. We're a physical person. Right? We're in a physical body, in a physical world. We have to involve ourselves in different physical activities. We have to eat. We have to drink. We have to sleep. We have to work in order to earn money, in order to get all these things. So it's not an even playing field. We have all these, uh, the home court advantage for the sports fans, we, we're, all, we're, we're a traveling team always. We never have the home court advantage. We're always in this, in this physical setting that we're forced to be so physicalized. And he says there, hashbalato hi hagbahato. That, that that lowering of us, that actually is what can propel us upward and lift us up. Yes, we have to be in this physical world, but when we take this physicality of this world and we use it, and we use it for an uplifted purpose, right? We take the money that we earned, but with that, we're giving our tzedakah, we're giving our maaser, we're tithing, we're giving our tzedakah, we're helping other people, we're lending people. So then that takes, we have to eat, but when we do the bracha before, and we do the blessing before, and the blessing afterwards, what all of that does is takes our physical involvement here, And it lifts it up. It transforms our physicality, our materialism. So yes, we have to be here, but we have the the potential to turn this around. Just one last idea on this that that struck me when I was in Baltimore at my grandnephew's bar mitzvah. So my niece has a lot of these really nice... um, Oh, little posters, you know, sayings all over her her kitchen wall, right? And one that really struck me is, I don't know if I have it exactly, but along the lines, character is measured by how you treat those who can't do anything for you. That's how we measure character. How do you treat those who are not going to be able to do anything for you? There's no, right, we speak at a funeral, that chesed shall emet, the true chesed, where there's not going to be any reciprocity, right? How do you treat those who are not going to be doing anything for you? And the, there, you know, there, there are mitzvot that get stepped upon. Uh, there are also people. There are also people who get, who get stepped upon who get marginalized and, and, and pushed aside, right? And the same way that we have the, the, that the Pasuk is telling us those mitzvot that, that get disregarded, right, are the key. So I'd say especially the mitzvot that we do for those people who are often uh, disregarded, diminished, or marginalized, right, what we can do for them is, is key, 
to uh, to bringing about what what the pasuk speaks about afterwards. Jan, you want to say something? Uh, even so, even if you think there's no transactional thing going on, in that interaction, you may still gain. Oh, for sure you do. You know, there may for be, sure you do. You may still be getting something out of it. Yeah, if it's, if it's you certainly get quantitative or non material. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, an example yeah. I like is you know how nice VPCA and UCA are. So, the how the, nice? What do you mean? I'm sorry. The Village Park and University Community Associations are. How so, nice the the associations how are. How pretty it is. Oh, how pretty it is. Yes. You know, so all those landscapers you know all the um sometimes i'll see them working and pruning and i'll say thank you i'll say doesn't everything look fabulous yeah and i mean it because it's like nice but i mean first it's hashem of course making all that color yeah yeah but, but that, it's an extension yeah absolutely absolutely hard. absolutely i agree janet i agree can you just repeat how the word ahab um so akev means heal, right? Right. So Rashi said those things which we heal on, which we trample upon, the akev. Okay. So not right? specifically easy, but just things we tend to disregard. Right. And then in terms of things that we <laughs> trample upon, might be easy, might be people, right? Might be all of these different possibilities that we mentioned yes in today's the way can i can i, can I put it you okay if I, if it, okay um it, in today's hebrew akev is after you hear it oh in the, after. in the end no no no, no. <clears throat> In, in, it means after. Big vote something means after. Oh, something. on the heel. Uh, 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 and English we say on the heels of. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. After you will hear this, that this is what you're going to do. So that's. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So, so how, how, how do you want to learn it? <laughs> no, after mm -hmm. you hear this. Oh, as a result thing. of. Yes, as a result. As, uh, as a result of. After you are conceived. Nice. Yeah, nice. And just one other thing, the 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 Orachayim says the haya is a term of happiness. Okay, so when will when will there be this happiness? Ekev tishmaum, right? That that is a way that a person we mentioned before, if a person is fully fully open, fully present, and and appreciating everything, and and and, and living fully. Then a person has a tremendous sense of of simcha, of 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 happiness, of joy, of of a sense of accomplishment that one can have. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Hmm. Well, let's just see the let's just see this pasuk at least on page nine. 82, right? The, as I mentioned before, the very bottom of page 982, Perichet, Pasuk Yud, the last, last, the second to last line, last word, right, is talking about the one Torah mandated blessing that we have, the, Torah, the one clearly Torah mandated blessing, and that is, uh, let, let's go to Pasuk Zion, verse 7. Hashem is going to bring you to a good land. Eris nachlei mayim, ayenot, utamot, yotzim, likavahar, where fountains, springs coming out. Eris chita, usora, vigefen, uteina, virimon, eretz, zeit, shemen, udvash. And these are the shiva minim, right? The seven species through which the land of Israel is praised. Wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranate, Olive oils and devash is not bee honey, but it is date honey. So these are the seven minim, and these are those for which we have 
a special bracha achrona, right? We have birkat hamazon, right? We have the full birkat hamazon when one is 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 having a meal, a, 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 a bread meal made of one of the grains. But we also have the bracha of al hamichya, right? Which is a longer. Um, it's called the bracha me'ain shalosh. It takes um, a component of each of the first three brachot, blessings of Birkat Amazon, grace after meals. It takes a component of that, it's bracha me'ain shalosh. It takes a taste of those three. And that's what we say after we have any of these fruits, dates, olives, grapes, figs, pomegranates. That's when we make that bracha. Yes. Date? Yeah. No, so I think. Because of how it the it cycle. It is eight. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, okay. it's it's a definite eight. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, that's a that's a tree. It's a not pom- a tree. Palm is actually botanically is not a tree. <laughs> that's my husband. I was saying eight, and then it's a, I was it's told so no, because of how the fruit. What is it? The cycling of fruiting. Shrub. It's a shrub. It's not shrub. Bori Priya eats. Uh, so you want to say that botanically it is banana like? Yeah. That's 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 Uh huh. So I've been very confused because I it's her eats. It is. It is her eats. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now I'm not much of a. In banana. Banana is adama. Yeah. Why? Hmm? Why? Why? So I understood that, uh, th- that basically the banana is not a tree that, that remains year to year and gives forth its bananas, but it sort of comes up and down. I, I, I'm not sure. But, uh, but, but a, a palm tree, is, it, I, it stays there. I've got a few in front of my house. I don't, I don't have dates. Right? The green cycle is apparently not as we would I, I don't know if a fruiting cycle is what affects okay. the bracha. Oh, I think, or... yeah, yeah. It was, it was typically if, if, if a tree is there throughout and it gives its fruits and then gives its fruits and gives its fruits. Yeah. So dates are definitely ha'ets. Okay. The, uh, absolute ha'ets. There's somewhere there's some part. I don't know. Because Judy said she's heard that. I don't know. Too. I don't know. Okay, Google. Yes. What does Rabbi Google have to say? Palms are classified as herbs, similar to grasses, bananas, and sedges. I don't know what that is because they lack something. Anyway, they're not. What do they lack? They don't. I think they don't have branches. They have fronds. Uh huh. Yeah. They branch out, and there's the the. Central portion uh, of the frog is also the They secondary branch. growth in wood. They create a wood-like uh, epidermis through primary thickening of the whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, the trunk is not mm-hmm. technically a tree. That part That's I what, also yeah. remember. Uh-huh. But halakhically in terms of a bracha, <laughs> it is bore pre ha eights. Someone generalized, and now there's this incorrect other. So don't spread it any further, Janet. Yeah. Okay. Just between you and me. <laughs> yes. The achalta pasuk yud, and you will eat visavata, and you will become satiated. Uve rachta es Hashem elokecha, and you will bless Hashem your God. Al ha'aretz ha'tova for this good land, Asher Natan Lach. So this, like I said, is the one clearly mandated Torah level blessing. There are also those that say that the bracha that we say prior to learning Torah is also Birchat Torah is also min Torah. But this is the one clearly mandated: eat, be satiated, uve rachta. And bless Hashem your God, Al Ha'aretz Tova, for the good land, 
Asher Natan Lach, that he has given to you. And that's why in Abir Katamazon, the first bracha is Hazan for, for sustaining. And the next one is Nodelacha Al Eretz Chemda Tova or Chava, thanking God for the great land. And then we have Ubenei Yerushalayim. Those are the three, the three um, Torah level blessings of Birkat Hamazon. Why does this go past that? Why isn't it just those three? The end. Why does Birkat extend past that? Right. Okay, so so we have those three brachot, and then added on. Uh, is the bracha hatov v'hametiv, which is that God is good and does good, and that was added on during a very, very um, depressing and uh, period, which could have made us all uh, despondent. That was the crushing of the Bar Kochva re- re- revolt which coming soon after the Chorban, the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, we thought this was Mashiach. Rabbi Akiva thought Bar Kochva was the Mashiach until he died. And then he, right, which, showed, which showed that he was not. And along with the, with, with the after effects of that revolt being crushed by the Romans, there was the city of Beitar, which was um, massacred absolutely massacred and it was only months later that we were able to return there and we found that the bodies had not decomposed and we were able to give a proper burial to our brothers and sisters who were massacred there beta um i i don't know where it is present day I don't. I mean, we we, we have we, we have Beitar now in Israel. I, I, it probably is in that area. And right? that was the same time period. The massacre at Beitar. The massacre was was, was on the heels mm-hmm. on the heels of Akev mm-hmm. on the heels of the the Bar Kochva revolt being crushed, and at that point we were feeling that we were adrift. Right, Chorban, second time, Beit Hamid is destroyed. Right, we had, we thought it was Mashiach. Right, put down. Right, we're decimated. Right, God, are you still there with us or not? And and this this ability that we had, which shows again the 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 the, the incredible resilience of the Jewish spirit. <laughs> And we saw that miracle. It was a tragic miracle. But we were, the bodies had not become decomposed. We're not torn apart by animals. We're just, was there and we could give a proper burial. Right? And we know how much, you know, just the news this morning, there were six hostages who had been murdered by the Hamas murderers, right? Who were able to get the bodies out from the, some tunnel there and and to give them a proper Jewish burial. And the ages of these hostages, this one was 80, this one was 69, this one was 70, this, this one was 50. I mean, right? But but the importance that we give to being able to give a proper burial. So that's when that bracha was, the fourth bracha rabbinic was instituted. Interestingly, <clears throat> because that fourth bracha is in, in Bikr Namazon is rabbinic. That, that is why this is the only case that Ashkenazim answer amen to their own bracha. Sfar didn't do it often in their davening, right? wherever there's an end of a sequence. Right? Shemer Mo Yisrael La'ad, amen. Right? Amber Mo Yisrael Bashalom, amen. Right? But we, Ashkenazim, our customs only to answer amen when A, it's the end of a series, and we're now transitioning into a different level bracha, a rabbinic bracha. Everything after that, Judy, harachaman, is just supplications that were added on. The compassionate one, reign over us, 
right, right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Bring, bring Mashiach, bring Eliyahu and Navi. Those. That's a good question, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure historically um, at what point those were added on. Were they all added on at once? Right? Was it uh, was it cumulative? I I don't know. If someone would like to take upon themselves to do a little uh, a little investigative work with Rabbi Google and see what one can find. That's a very interesting question. I don't know when those were when those were added on, and I think the Vilna Gon leaves them out in certain in certain days. Right? That that they're all clearly add on add on for our uh, for our bench. Right? And when and how it was added on? Interesting question. Um, that I don't know. Well, I don't know. Some of that it's, it kind of makes sense that. If someone was gracious enough to host you, you would want to ask Hashem for yeah. goodness. For yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Look, they, they all make sense. It's kind of like just being grateful. They all make sense, right? The, the, the question is, right? At what point were, were, were these added on? Were they added on as a as a as a package, right? Were they slowly accepted and this one accepted? I think Chabad has a has a thing about Mashiach, uh, about their about their Rebbe, at least some Chabad, right? Will have a thing about about the Lubavitcher Rebbe and Harachaman, right? You know that you know that clearly uh, has not been accepted by uh, you know broadly. I'm not even sure if it's accepted throughout Chabad, right? You know, but you know that's an interesting. Uh, I don't know some, some, something something to look into. Is, are there, is there anywhere else in the Torah where there's someone? To mention. The, the, this is it. And are there any other commandments related to it besides the bracha uh, after that it's different? Um. So let's say the mitzvah, right? Judy had asked, are there are there other um, mitzvot that are particular to these shiva minim? Right, so let's say when we are growing uh, peya, right, which means leaving the corner of the field, um, that's not just, there are, no, it's not just these. There are certain requirements. So uh, not that I know of, not that I know of, right? The, uh, the, the mitzvah of, of, the, of tithing, things like that, right, certainly goes beyond, goes beyond just these, these shiva meanings. Okay, let's let's jump to the Shema and let's let's double back to the Shema, page nine seven nine seventy two. Right again, our parsha has the second parsha of Shema. Let's go to the first parsha of the Shema. Right, page nine seventy two, Perek Vav, chapter six, verse four. Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Right, Shema Yisrael, hear Israel or accept. The way Rashi learns, Hashem, who is now Elokeinu, will be Hashem Echad. Right, will be the time that the whole world will recognize Hashem as one. But this, as we always say, this I like to say, this is the Jewish pledge of allegiance. And Hashem is Elokeinu. Hashem is a name that refers to God's Mida of Chesed. Elohim refers to God's mida of din. One refers to God's attribute of kindness, mercy. The other towards the attribute of din, of judgment. And it's all one, right? We like to think of, you know, we like to bifurcate somewhat. You know, this uh, it's all coming from the same place. Hashem Echad. Like we say, in the, we, the Navi Zechariah said that the Nehemiah, we say at the end of our lane every time, Hashem lemelech, Hashem will become the melech al kol aretz throughout all the land. Bayoma, who on that day yeah Hashem echad, God will be one Ushmo echad, and His name will be one. What does that mean? His name will become one. So an explanation that's given is right now we have all these different names for Hashem. Some connote judgment, others connote kindness, compassion, 
at that point, with that clarity, Hashem's name will be Echad. There'll be just one name, and that will be kindness. In other words, we'll be able, we will recognize how all the things that we went through individually and nationally will recognize how they were all chesed along the way. Right now, for us, it's hard for us to imagine how that's even possible with the horrors that 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 we have endured right throughout different different time periods and generations. You should love Hashem with all of your lave, all of your heart, uvechol nafshicha, right? And simply meaning, right, levavcha, with all of your passion, uvechol nafshicha, with your whole soul, meaning, afilu notel et nafshecha, right? Even if it means giving up, giving up your life, to be willing to sacrifice your life al kiddush Hashem, I, to sanctify God's name, uvechol me'odecha, and with all of your ma'od, all of your resources, some say v'chol me'odecha. What does ma'od mean? Very. We each have our verys, right? Aaron, you're very this, and Janet, you're very that, and Mary and Judy and I, we're, we're each very this or that. And we should take our veriness, we should take that which is something where we were granted a lot of and use that, use those kochot, use those abilities that Hashem has given us and to serve Hashem with that. Vahayu, let's say, take the last, I'll, I'll double back to this posting in a second, the beautiful Orachayim. But we then say, Vahayu adver ma'ela shanotim et savicha hayom al levavecha. And these things that I'm commanding you today should be on your heart. Rabbi Schwab, in his, in his, in his incredible Sefer book on tefillah, on prayer, he tells a story that a, a rabbi, a non-Orthodox rabbi came to speak to him. And, um, and they were talking, and the rabbi said to him, you know, I, I put on my tefillin every day. So, sorry, Shav said, oh, that's wonderful. Tell me, why, why do you do that? And he said, well, I hold tradition very, very dear and very strong. Or Shav said to him, I hate tradition. Tradition means nothing to me. Said, You're an Orthodox rabbi. <laughs> what do you mean tradition means nothing to you? He said, well, because my grandfather... You know, wore knickers, so I should wear knickers. What does, what does that have to do with me? Right? Isn't that what we men wear black hats? Huh? Isn't that what the black hat is about? Meaning what? Tradition from. We'll see. Right? <laughs> so he said, Why do I wear its fill in? Because the Pasuk says, Vayu hadrim ela asher anochi mitzavicha. Hayom. Because God says, I, I, God, am commanding you. The reason I do it is not because my father or grandfather or great-grandfather did it. It's because God, mitzavicha, hayom. Right today, anochi, God says, I, the anochi of the Ten Commandments. That, that's the anochi. Mitzavicha, I'm commanding you. I put on my film this morning because God told me that I should put them on. But that's not the direct commandment. It's only in a few lines later. By the list of signs, I will not be the ordinance. And then it goes on the whole thing. It goes on the whole paragraph. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? You know, yes, there are customs to, to, to dress a certain way. Um, I don't know if that's so much tradition, right? Certainly a strimal, right? Would be that's what they wore in Europe. It's hardly, you know, the fur hat. It's hardly a, 
a, a, a garn today. But I, I think the black hat or the strimal, it's more of a of of a uniform of a way of identifying with with a certain a certain group, right? So it's not that that you know the reason that that has become the the, the identifying uniform might be because that was right. But the truth is, if you look at pictures of the mere yeshiva back in the 1910s or the 1920s, they're all wearing a, 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 a straw hat. They're all wearing a light-colored hat. So, um, I, right, but, but that's more of a, uh, of a uniform that, uh, that we have. The Or Chaim says, says an incredible thing. And he says, when it says back over here on 972, that first, the, the second passage, Love Hashem with all your heart, all your soul, uvechol ma'odecha, and all of your uh, and all of your possessions, resources. See, he says that this actually is talking about three types of. Kineged ha-hergesh, three aspects of a feeling of love or appreciation that a person has, right? What are our three um, areas of, of need of passion? There is b'chol levavcha, and we should love Hashem with all, with taking elements of each of these three. With all of your heart, when we're talking about <clears throat> a love in the heart, so we would think mostly about a life partner, a spouse, right? That is someone for whom we have this, this passionate love for, right? And it is with that passionate love that we have for for another person, the ahavta et Hashem alukecha. That's the level of love that we need to try to have towards Hashem. That's what it says, bechol levavcha, right? Because when we when we really love someone, right? So it's with all of our hearts. We'll do anything for that person. That person's on our mind, right? Someone does something to that person. Whoa. Right, right. You know, don't you mess with my right. So that's bechol levavcha, and we need to take that and have not away from that person, but that's the type of love that we need to have towards Hashem. That's bechol levavcha. Uvechol nafshicha. That he says is referring to the things that we need to have. Achila, shtia, right? The the things that we need, food drink, the things that we need in order to stay alive, right? And we have, uh, and a person will go to great lengths to make sure that one has that. So that same um, commitment, right? The first one will be the passion. The second one will be that commitment, right? To make sure I've got those things, so our love for Hashem needs to mirror that also, that we need to make sure that we have that relationship. But then he says, both of these, right? He said, right, once we've had it, right, we'll work hard to get it, but often we'll become complacent afterwards, right? You know, after we've eaten, I uh, right? don't talk to me about food. Right? I, I don't, I don't want to see another end of it. Don't, right? right? After we've had it, our, our desire for it, right? and he mentions also in terms of, of intimate relations, right? So after one has engaged in intimate relations, then the desire for that is 
is is way is has ebbed uh, tremendously. So with both of these, it is right. We have there's a certain passion, but once one has it, so then uh, finished already. That's not the case when it comes to ma'odecha, when it comes to your resources, when it comes to one's assets, when it comes to money, right? Money in Hebrew is kesef. Kesef also means lichsof, means to, to desire, to want, right? So when it comes to our ma'odecha, the more we have, the more we want. And we don't feel, oh, I have this. All right, now I'm all set, right? But whatever we have, we're looking to see, well, what's the market at today, right? Has the portfolio, right? That's how we are when it comes to these um, these assets. And therefore, he says, right, the Pesach says in Kohelet, Ohev Kesef, Lo Yisba Kesef, right? A person who loves Kesef, is never yisba, v'achalta v'savata, become satisfied. Lo yisba, is not satisfied with kesef. And that's another aspect in our avat Hashem, that we shouldn't become complacent with what we have, but with whatever we have, we should always look to see what is, how can I have more when it comes to our avat Hashem. So he says that these three these three types of love, each one is a certain type of love, and we need to try to work on bringing that love of these different aspects of Ava to bring that into, uh, into, uh, into Hashem. All right, just one last, one last idea. The question always asks, how could, I, how could I be commanded to love? All right, command me to do something. Right? Love your brother. Love your... <laughs> how, am I, how, how does the Torah command us to love Hashem? And what it means, or what those explain, is do the things, take the steps which will lead you to feeling love to Hashem. Meaning, focus on appreciation. Focus on the myriad blessings that you have in your life, that you've had from from day one until day present. And just recognize all the gifts that we have. And every person has, uh, if I can walk, if I can talk, if I can see, if I have... Right, if I have a roof over my head, you know, I always see these things that go around. You know, if you are, if you have a computer, you are part of the 0.0% of the of the world's pot, right? All these things, right? A person takes the time to appreciate, to be present, right? To appreciate all that one has. If that's who, so then, then the loving of Hashem is is a result of that. When we are we appreciate and we focus. And that appreciation and recognition that this is a gift from Hashem. So what your brother did, what Josh did, when you said, and along with Modal, he'd actually say something. Yeah. Like, you, Good morning, Hashem. What, yeah. You wake up and you can still speak and the vibration of breath is still working. Yeah. So um, that's been, right away, it make, makes, helps me to be great. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. I'm glad that uh, that you're keeping my brother Josh and uh, one of his teachings, keeping it alive. Thank you. So next week, are you going to go over the second that... paragraph of the Shema? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a week behind. We'll have to double back. Yeah, the second paragraph of Shema has the same, but it doesn't say Ma'odechem, because that's in the plural, right? So, so there... Right, it's not the communal assets. Yeah, yeah, we 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 we, we will work on that. We will work on that. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, Yashikalach, everybody. Bevakasha, bevakasha. I know the Thursday event is.